In this exercise on the p-value interpretation, uh, we're going to go back to the car sales data now. And this exercise which we had asked you to do on the critical value method, I'll demonstrate this using the p-value method now. On the car sales data, test if average mileage is 30. So I've got the data set in SAS. This is the car sales data. And we have uh, the miles per gallon uh, variable over here. And we're going to test whether the average is 30 or not. The procedure is uh, similar. So it's going to be the same PROC T test again. Instead of looking at the T value, I will look at the P value now. So PROC T test data equal to class dot car underscore sales. H naught is equal to is equal to 30. And var is equal to mpg miles per gallon run. Press F3 and we get the result. The actual mean of this data is 23.85 and the p value that we are testing it or the hypothesis that we are testing it against is 30. The p value that we get is 0 0.0001. So, what does this actually mean? So, if I uh, go back to the previous lecture, and we again uh, draw this out. What we've got over here is we have a sample. So I've got this uh, distribution over here. And let's assume this is the sampling distribution. So the hypothesized mean is 30. But the sample mean that I've got, if I look at this, the sample mean that I've got is 23.85. So let's say 23 is somewhere over here. Let me just draw this again. Yeah. So I've got 23.85 over here and we are drawing on this x-axis we have uh, the standard errors which separate the two. So this is separated by 23.8 minus 30 divided by this number of standard errors. So this is will be at zero standard error and this will be let's say at what is the standard number of standard errors? I see the T value 17.7. .7. So this is about 17 standard errors away from here. So what does this P value essentially mean? This P value tells us what is the area of the curve which lies beyond 17 standard errors on this side. And if I go again, the same number of standard errors over this side, over here. So the total area of these two regions is coming out to be 0 0.0001. So this is 0 0.0001. I know the total area under the curve is 1. And the area which is lying outside the uh, the sample means on both sides, this difference on both sides is 0 0.001. Therefore, what does the p-value also tell us? The p-value tells us what is the probability, what is the probability of us extracting a sample mean further equal to or even further away from the hypothesized population mean. So this tells us the probability of extracting such a sample is 0 0.0001 or very, very, very unlikely. Therefore, this sample has come out from a population which is definitely not 30. right? And we are going ahead and rejecting this hypothesis. The H0 that the mu or population mean is 30 is rejected. The HA which is that mu is not 30. So this is accepted. So we reject the H0 and we go with the alternative hypothesis. Supposing if I were to do this test against a less extreme H0. So let us take an H0 which is equal to, let's say, instead of uh, 30, I'm going to take, let's say, 24.2. And now I run this. So what do I get? At 24.2, the p-value which I get is 0.3227. And how do I draw this out? What is the interpretation? So let's look at this. I'll generate a new diagram. So I have a distribution. Let me make this again. Yeah, that's much better. Center of distribution, the H naught is that this mu is equal to. 
So let me look at the code once more. I'm testing it at 24.2. The actual mean comes out to be for the sample is still the same 23.8. So which is coming somewhere over here 23.8. The difference between these two in terms of standard errors is 0.99 or almost one standard error over here. So I go one standard error over here as well and I get Okay, so this is one standard error on this side as well. So the p-value is going to tell us what is the probability that I get a sample mean x bar which is more than one standard error away from the hypothesized mean which is 24.2. That p-value is this area over here, here as well as over here. And that p-value is coming out to be 0.32. So that means there is a 32% chance that I will extract a sample of mean 23.85 so x bar is 23.85 from a population of mean 24.2 so this is greater than the value of alpha if the alpha is 0 0.05 the p value is greater than alpha therefore the null stands the null cannot be rejected therefore i'm going to go with the null hypothesis which that mean is 24.2 therefore the sample fails to reject this hypothesis and this is much easier than looking at the t value because the t value maybe uh, we will have to always uh, remember the critical values. I can simply look at the p value. So whether the p value alpha is 0 0.05 or alpha is equal to 0 0.01, in both the cases the p value is greater than alpha. So p is greater than alpha, therefore h0 stays. Also remember the p value is also the probability of null being true. Let's look at another example. Test whether fuel capacity, average fuel capacity is 17 and a half. So the variable name is fuel underscore cap. So I'm going to look at this. Let's copy this code, run it again. H naught is And variable is fuel cap. And let's test this. Let's have a look at the result. The p value is coming out to be 0 0.153, which means that the, uh, the sample lies in the acceptance region for this hypothesis, i.e., the null stands. There is not enough evidence to reject this null. Therefore, the fuel capacity of the population could be 17 and a half. The sample that we have extracted does not reject this hypothesis. Again, let's move on. Average horsepower is 200. Let's have a look. So the horsepower variable, the, vari the variable name is horsepower. So I'll just use that into the data set. I'll just change here horsepower and H0 is 200. Let's put that in and we have our code and there we get it. The p-value in this case is 0 0.0014. This value is less than alpha of 0 0.05. Right? Therefore, we are rejecting this hypothesis. Uh, this value is also less than uh, 0 0.01. We are again rejecting the hypothesis. So if, uh, if the alpha is 5% or alpha is 1%, we still end up rejecting this hypothesis, i.e. this sample is unlikely to come from a population where the average horsepower is 200. Why? The p-value is low. Again, please remember, if the p-value is low, null has to go. And how low? Alpha is the point. So if p-value is low, reject the null hypothesis. And how low is going to be determined by the alpha of the test. The alpha is, in most cases, is at 5%. In some cases, we can put it down to even 1%.